Zainab Ismail paints us the picture of the ruin caused by the rain. The devastation is still all water and despair. As the skies cleared from the unrelenting, saturating rains beating at Kano in Kisumu County, washing off a people's livelihoods and hope, the aftermath is now even more real and for many more people. More than 600 families now have nowhere to call home after River Nyando broke its banks. Naomba, naomba, naomba sana. President yetu wa Uru Kinyata, pamoja na baba yetu Raila, vile nyinyi mulisika mkono, wawili kusaidia Kenya hata sahi, musika mkono mkuje musaidia sisi. In Muranga County, the earth gave in to the might of the rainwater. The landslides swept up homes and livelihoods as thousands of tea bushes were destroyed. Locals say they heard a rumbling sound at about 2 o'clock early in the morning as the angry torrent of water and sludge brought down the trees in its path. <laughs> Six landslides have so far hit various parts of Muranga County, but there have been no deaths. In Nyatike Migori County, it is still the same image of a community trying to weather a storm that has upset their simple lives. More than 500 people are now homeless, the roads leading up to the centers enveloped by flood waters. In the capital, many roads and homes were flooded a snapshot of a country struggling to stay afloat. West Pokot, we lost a total of 43. And as of two days ago, uh, 36 bodies had been recovered. The floods have once again exposed the country's fragile infrastructure. The death toll from the floods has since risen to 132. 330,000 people have been adversely affected and approximately 17,000 others displaced. An undetermined number of people have been either marooned or cut off by floods and over 1,000 livestock swept away. Among the 32 counties most affected include Lamu, Tana River, Makweni, West Pokot, Kisumu, Bungoma and Meru. We are appealing to anyone in those regions that please move to safer areas. You will go back when the situation stabilizes. But as the government still searches for answers, the focus is still a dark, gloomy cloud that could bring many parts of the country more than just moisture. Zainab Ismail, NTV. Wow, 132 people dead there, 17,000 displaced, more than 11,000 heads of livestock lost, and, and hundreds of acres of land also swept away, land with crops, crops that were supposed to have been harvested, swept away in this deluge that is sweeping across the country. That is where we start this conversation today. The impact that this flooding and the rains is having on the agriculture sector and why our agriculture sector is so vulnerable to the, to the vagaries of weather and why we don't seem to be learning anything from it and what that means for the country's food security going forward in the, next, in the coming months when you go into the dry season in February there before the next rains in, that begin March 2020. Now to put this discussion in this, uh, this uh, conversation into perspective, We've got a panel here. On my immediate left, we have Dr. Timothy Njagi, who is a research fellow at the Tegemeo Institute of Agricultural Policy, which is uh, under the Egerton University, which is an agriculture university mostly. And next to him, we have Ruth Kemboi, who is a farmer from Wasin Gishu County and also a member of the Kenya National Farmers Federation, uh, the chair of the Wasin Gishu chapter. And uh, finally, we have Laban Korelach, who is also a farmer from West Pokot County, which is one of the counties that have been hardest hit by this. Uh, a devastation of floods across the country and he's also the chair of the Farmers Federation in West Pocot County. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this discussion. Thank Perhaps you. we can start with you, Laban. Okay. West Pocot, we saw what happened with West, in West Pocot. Yes. When the mud came and swept away homes, buried people alive, right. many people, lives were lost. Yes. There, there's a, disc, uh, there's a, a differing um, perspective on exactly how many lives were lost there. The government giving one number, the county giving another number. But as a farmer in West Pocot County, yeah. how have you been impacted? 
Um, yes, uh, thank you uh, very much for having us in the studio. Uh, West Pokot County has experienced the worst uh, catastrophe, the natural calamity uh, for, that has never been experienced before. Yes. Because uh, it started in the night of the 22nd uh, November. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the night, uh, as people had gone to sleep, um, there was heavy downpour. And uh, not forgetting that prior to that, uh, over several weeks in the past month, there has been heavy downpour, uh, unlike what it was in the past. Uh, and therefore, uh, that night, uh, uh, the flood was so heavy and uh, it swept away homes, it swept away farms, it swept away livestock, mm -hmm. it swept away uh, whatever the infrastructure there was, uh, like the stores uh, for the food, yes. uh, farms were left bare, and, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and consequently, uh, there were over 4,500 displaced mm -hmm. in the, especially two uh, areas that were hardly, uh, large, largely hit, mm -hmm. that is uh, Pokot South uh, sub-county and uh, Pokot Central sub-county. Mm -hmm. Those are largely and farming communities. Those are the farming communities. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, we also have uh, uh, up to 58 dead, uh, dead and, and, mm -hmm. and still many more missing mm -hmm. because uh, incidentally, from a cultural perspective, uh, they may not even have counted the children that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, had been found dead or something. So there's yes. still many others that are lost in the debris. Yes. So really, it has been very catastrophic. Do you, have you had a chat with your farmers to see how much land was affected or how many animals were lost? Uh, yes, uh, the animals are in thousands. Actually, the actual figures are yet to, it's not less than a thousand plus. Mm -hmm. Uh, goats and cows mm. uh, and similarly uh, all land was uh, uh, rendered uh, wasted uh, yes. you, you cannot farm there anymore mm. and uh, similarly uh, the displaced family millies uh, it cannot be seen in the foreseeable future for mm. them to go back yes. if anything uh, we should really ask all stakeholders and especially the central government mm. that a critical uh, resettlement plan Mm. has really to be put in place because those people cannot go back. Mm. Uh, so this, this uh, climate change effect has been uh, disastrous mm. and uh, uh, has have rendered people hopeless. Mm. Uh, but we, we, we are glad that uh, many stakeholders have come to the aid of uh, those surviving farmers, yes. including treatment to the sick. Yes. Uh, and of course, uh, food has been available to assist in the mm. short term. Mm. Uh, as well as other food and non-food support uh, arrangements. Yes. So really we appreciate that, but uh, the situation on the ground is grim. Mm. It's, it's really catastrophic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Ruth, uh, Western Gishu County is also a farming uh, county largely. And uh, usually around November, a lot of farmers are harvesting the maize in the crop, but, uh, the, the, the crop in the field. But we know this is the rain season, October, November, December. But for this year, in fact, for the last two years or so, the rains have been so heavy that a lot of farmers have been unable to actually get that crop out of the field. Have you assessed with your farmers how, many, how much land is underwater in your county? Thank you, madam. Thanks for inviting us to this station. Personally, I want to say food security is going to be a problem in this country mm -hmm. because we always believe the North Rift is the basket of this country. Mm -hmm. And from the look of things, we are going to lack food. Mm -hmm. Personally, I went down within the six sub-counties in Wasingishu County, mm -hmm. and I realized that the farmers have not done anything. They have not gone back to their farms because mm. everywhere is wet. Mm. They cannot go back to the, most of the farms. Have, uh, farmers have put their maize in stacks, mm. but currently they cannot harvest because of the wet season. Mm. Secondly, the infrastructure. If they can manage to harvest maybe 10 to 20 bucks, they cannot even reach the market. Mm. So um, drying the maize is also another problem. Yes. They cannot sell their maize when, they are when it is still very wet. Yes. So actually things are not good. Mm. And food security is going to be a problem in mm. this country. Look at that picture behind you, on the screens behind you. What, does that, what, do you. what do you see when you see that picture? What comes to mind? Yeah, when I see this picture, it makes me to believe that climate change is a problem. Mm. And we should really take um, it seriously and even go an extra mile 
with other leaders because mm -hmm. we cannot do it alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Dr. Njagi, from a policy perspective, yeah. what do you make of all of this? So, <clears throat> I think let's start by first of all expressing solidarity with the families, especially of the guys who have been affected. Uh, I think the loss of life is regrettable because I think there's more we can actually do to prevent mm -hmm. that even though we have adverse weather. And then uh, from a policy perspective, I think one of the things that we need to do is that uh, from what Laban and uh, Ruth have shared, uh, you realize that you're talking about both livelihoods and then of course there's the issue of food security. Yes. So for food security, I think uh, the first thing is that uh, the, the closest we've had recently to, mm. to what we're experiencing now is the long rains of 2018. Yes. We had also an above more than uh, above normal uh, rainfall, mm. and uh, what we realized that whereas it was some it was good for some commodities, mm. it was also devastating for other commodities. Eh? Mm. So, for example, like the, what you are seeing in the picture uh, with the water logging, eh? you know mm. that has a serious effect, especially on uh, the soil nutrition. Eh? Yes. So you may realize that uh, the yields are more likely to go down. Eh? Mm. Uh, you extend this to other commodities like potatoes, uh, especially the tubers. Eh? Mm. You know, uh, not just pot Irish potatoes, but extend this to tubers then you realize that those guys may not even harvest. Can a maize crop survive when it's waterlogged no, like that? No, no. So the, the water has to drain quickly. Mm. Otherwise, if, it's, if, if it persists at these conditions, uh, then the, the, the farmers actually will lose the crop. Mm. So from a policy perspective, I think uh, one of the key things that we need to do now, of course, is to uh, extend uh, or enhance our monitoring systems. So we need, we've seen the cases from uh, West Pokot, we've seen the cases from Muranga, uh, where there's landslide. So mm -hmm. we need to like map out uh, how much cropland or how much area under cultivation has actually been lost mm. uh, to flooding or to land <coughs> to the landslides mm. or to even water logging. Mm. Uh, so once we're able to... to, to In West Pokot, it has not been determined, determined yet how much yes, land. Yes. But even, even in these other counties, eh, mm. I don't think there's anybody who has tried to determine that. So we need to kind of pull together to try and assess uh, how much we are losing towards that. And then mm. it's not just the, the, the landslides, eh, but mm. also like uh, the flooding mm. as well as the water logging. Because water logging mm. would be much shallower you do mm. not see the water at this height, but mm. it would be still, the, the, the soil become logged to the extent that uh, the crop cannot uh, grow that as it would grow in the normal conditions. Mm. Uh, more worrying actually is the, the, the bread basket that was mentioned. What's because, the issue? Yeah, we had yes. a very good, good crop that we were expecting uh, for this long rain harvest. Mm. And if, if, if the rains persist and, you know, in 2018, that, that long, that year, we, we, were, we estimated that we lost About almost 30. 5, millions, five yes. million bucks. Yes, the Ministry of Agriculture had put the loss up between 20 and 30 percent. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but that was even after the five, the five million I'm talking about was I mean immediately after harvest. Eh? Mm. What what actually could not even get to the market. Eh? Mm. So I think they were talking about five million bucks, eh? of which, <coughs> if you put it into context, eh? in the long short rain season, which mm. now this is the season that we expect to harvest in February, mm. that is what we expect to harvest. Mm. So basically, we lost a whole, a whole, a whole season. season's harvest. Exactly. Mm. And um, <coughs> even the outlook for this year, remember it wasn't very positive because we had uh, issues uh, in the long rain season. Mm. Uh, we had a late onset, and th that's part of the problem we have right now because mm. at least the majority of the farmers now would, have been f would be finishing to harvest in the normal season. Yes. But right now is when most of them are actually starting to harvest. Mm. So the, uh, the, 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 the projection initially was that uh, it was going to be around 33 to 35 million. Mm. So if this persists and you factor in the post-harvest losses, eh, then you realize that uh, we may actually get much more, maybe to what was saying, that we now become stressed in terms of uh, food. That is so we are going to be in, pro in trouble when yeah, the next year likely, comes? Most likely, uh, by the time now we, we finalize the, the, the short season, yeah. um, <coughs> to, to now combine what we'll have gotten for the cropping year, yes. yeah, we are likely to be in deficit. Mm. If you look at, um, the UN has compiled some data on mm. this whole flooding situation, mm. and they say that um, this rain is not unique to Kenya. Mm. It's happening across of Africa, but uh, but uh, the Horn of Africa has mm. been the hardest mm. hit mm. with the rains, particularly Kenya, Somalia, and the DRC. And in these three countries particularly, there's mm. been a 300% rise mm. in rain between October and mm. December. Mm which might be the, high, the, 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 the worst flooding that the region has ever seen. Mm. Um, in Djibouti alone, there was two years worth of rain that fell in one single day. Yeah. And now, Kenya, we are, here we are in a cycle that is not, yes, it might be a bit more than we are used to, but mm. it's not new to new us. To us yeah. Laban, why do you think we are not always prepared for flooding? 
Yeah, I, I, I would say that uh, uh, we have uh, taken stock of mm -hmm. the challenges we've had uh, in the past. Mm -hmm. And uh, policy-wise, as our friend Tim has uh, said, uh, there has been good, good policies, including yes. uh, you know, the Climate Action Plan. Yes. But, which is the latest. But uh, I, I want to say that uh, it's, it's, I think, a wake-up call now mm -hmm. because we've, we've always been known to be very good in planning uh, uh, and, and trying to look for mitigation measures against such challenges. But uh, I think our implementation uh, is wanting. Uh, our Im implementation uh, levels mm -hmm. it, it really requires a serious, I think, multi-sector uh, you know, approach, mm. uh, which would be more realistic in the sense that uh, uh, it is now everybody. You, you, you've talked about other regions in our country. You've mm. talked about Djibouti and in other parts of this uh, continent. So really, I think this is a global problem. But mm. I think we sh we need to be alive as a country mm. that uh, unless now we take a serious proactive measure mm. to take the lead and 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 rope in. Mm. Uh, other critical stakeholders, uh, I think we are doomed. Mm. Just like uh, we do not foresee uh, any, any, any foodstuff, hardly any foodstuff will last as a few months in the new year. So that mm. means uh, our food security is, is, is as good as not there. Mm. Yes. What do you farm? Uh, maize. Mm. Uh, yes, I do maize and, uh, and, and beans mm. and, uh, yeah, and, and of course livestock farming. Mm. Yes. What will constitute a good harvest, a, a good season for you? How would you define a good season? A good season would uh, be one whereby uh, I think uh, you would get on an average acre if you really did your, your, your workings right. Mm. Uh, you, you would not le get less than, uh, not less than 18 bags mm. or at least 15 bags per mm. acre. Mm. Yes, and onwards depending on how you prepare yourself. Mm. And also, uh, uh, hoping that uh, the weather mm. doesn't disappoint. Dis uh, yeah, disappoint. Okay, factoring yeah. in the w the weather conditions right now, do you think you'll get that 18 bags? Um, I, I want to say, even right away, uh, farmers are still struggling with the little that uh, you know. It was it it was uh, definitely destroyed already within mm. the farm. Uh, a lot of it is already gone bad. Mm. So the little that is going to be available, well, there will still be a, a big problem because you may not consume 80%, uh, 75% of it mm. because Too already mm. it's already rotten. Mm. Yeah, so mm. I think that has a reflection of how severe mm. this, this disaster was. Mm. Uh, also adding, uh, I, I'm alive to the fact that uh, I should mention all the infrastructure in terms of the bridges, in terms of foot bridges, mm. in terms of farmers, uh, uh, I call it sprinklers, and uh, those, those machines, mm. uh, as well as our big irrigation uh, farm. Uh, the Galana uh, project. Uh, not mm. the Galana one, mm. but uh, this time is the way way mm. is, oh, is yes, in, uh, in West Pokot. Yes. All that infrastructure, the piping mm. system, the irrigation uh, system is all gone. Mm. So really, uh, it's as good as uh, hopelessness now is, is set in. And, and, uh, and, and I, w I would really like to emphasize the fact that uh, a great appeal should mm. go to our government. Yes. Uh, and more so, uh, His Excellency, the President, and the Deputy President, and our senior uh, government officials, mm. including even the former Prime Minister, because they know that area. I'm aware. They mm. know that area very well. Mm. We want to appreciate whatever they have done so far. Mm. But I, I think in terms of resettlement, uh, I think there is no other place they can go to. Mm. It, they can only be considered to be taken elsewhere outside West Pokot County. Mm. Yes. Mm. Ruth, uh, do you think you'll be able to get that 18 bags per acre this season? Yeah, for now I know the, the, the whole situation can still be saved. The problem with this country is that if we farmers declare that we are not going to harvest, the second day you will see importation in this country. Mm. So for now, I still believe our farmers can still be saved in a way that if we can give them a facility of drying this maize, mm. they can still be in a better position. Mm. But if we leave them the way it is now, 
mm. things might not be so good. Mm. So my worry is that if we declare it, that we are not going to <laughs> receive anything, yes. the next day you'll the just see, the you'll <laughs> see so many things in mm. our ports, you'll see Uganda opening their gates, mm. and at the end of the day, our farmers will still suffer. Mm. So if it is possible, let them buy uh, uh, this maize from the farmers and dry for them, even mm. at, a, at a lower cost. Mm. And at the end of the day, we shall still be in a better position. Mm. What is the cost of drying at the NCPB dryers? I don't know the cost, but I know they have been doing some charges. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dr. Njage, um, what is the role of that? Because from, from what I'm hearing from them is that there's no actual data yeah. that you can put your hands on and say this is exactly how we've been affected. Yes. What is the role of data in fixing this problem? So of course data, data is very critical especially to help uh, come up with the interventions that are actually required. I think from what both uh, Ruth and Laban mentioned, you realize that the short term measure right now for example would be, especially for the farmers in the North Rift, would be to get them the maize dryers. Mm. So we know that uh, there was this program that was there that was handed over to county governments. We don't mm. know how how, that how, how well went. it is working out mm. and whether there are constraints that needs to be unlocked. So it would be important for, and you know, one of the other challenges we also face in the sector mm. is that the data systems uh, where counties would generate data that feeds to the national level mm. kind of collapsed uh, once, uh, because of the issues or the, 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 the teething problems that mm. came with devolution. Mm. So we really need to build this back uh, mm. because at the national level we, <coughs> we, need, we cannot plan or we cannot make uh, useful or you know, impactful decisions mm. uh, without this data. Uh, for the short term, I think one of the key things, especially for the farmers who are harvesting, is to see what kind of support either the county or the national government can actually give in terms of maize drying services. Mm. Those mobile dryers, I think they need to be re revamped and uh, made to go around mm -hmm. where we have challenges of infrastructure then farmers can be supported actually to bring the maize to a, a common drying center mm -hmm. um, but definitely we need to make sure that we mop up all the maize it's, it's, it would be unfortunate if we allow that maize to go bad mm -hmm. and then but for, for uh, the large sorted. scale uh, farmers particularly the ones who are greatly impacted by this yes. kind of water logging yeah. because they rely on machinery, machinery yeah. to be able to actually harvest yes but if it's waterlogged like this tractor in kwashamba in Akwama. Yeah, of course, it can't go when it's like, uh, it cannot mm. go when it's For like a small scale yeah. farmer, it will yeah. be easy because you're doing the harvesting yeah. by hand anyway. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but remember, by now, most of you, even the large scale, we'll have already started stooking. Eh? So basically, it's just to ferry that maize eh? mm. to, to a place where it can actually be dried. Mm. And uh, the good thing is that, you know, for, for at least there should be some, some support eh? that can, if, there's, if the challenge is actually the infrastructure. Mm. So what, what can we do to, to, to improve that? Eh? And then of moving, one, one of the other like, uh, thing that we need to make sure that you're implementing, especially as, you, as you're going for, uh, for long-term planning, is basically what you said. So where we are right now in the, in the Horn of Africa, we are worst devastated by the effects of climate change. Mm. So ideally, when people talk about climate change, people only think about drought. Yes. But basically, climate change is about extreme weather. Mm. So when it rains, it, it, it floods. Uh, when mm. it, it dries, it completely dries completely up. Dry, yes. So we need to be able to, to start mapping out um, what are the areas that are at risk for, for, which, for which, whether it's drought or floods. Mm. Then we need to move beyond just saying, for example, it's very nice that the weatherman has told us that the rain will persist mm. up, to, up to the end of the month. Mm. But then what does that mean for the farmer? So that is, we need to, trans, to translate that data into knowledge mm. that farmers can actually use to make decisions. Mm. So if today we are telling farmers, eh, it's better to leave that maze because you are unable to get it, eh, or mm. we'll have a one month, one week break, mm. whereby please go and get all the maize that is in the field mm. and get it to a drying center. So we need to go beyond just telling them that it is going to rain up at the end of the month mm. to actually give them information that can help that them make useful. decisions. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. But do you think it's possible to save the situation as it is right now? She yeah. said it's possible to it's save it. Yes, I, I, also, I also strongly believe that it's possible. Uh, mm. And I think all you need to do is that at least for the, for the major uh, producing counties, I think the key issue is to get those dryers out. If there are challenges, of course, they can always ask uh, mm. both the national government and development partners for support. Mm. Uh, for, the, for the other commodities, I know like right now, uh, even guys who are doing Irish potatoes must be crying because the, once the soil becomes water water locked, then yes. they are going to lose everything. Everything. There is yes. going to be 100% mm. uh, uh, loss. So we need to start not to wait until 
uh, February when the season is ending, but we need to start seeing which, which areas are affected, how much are we losing for each commodity, and what does that mean for the basket, the food basket for mm. the country. Mm. And then now use that to inform decisions. Mm. Laban, do you think you get the, the, the information you need when it comes to farming? Do you uh, think the government gives you uh, the necessary information? Uh, yes. In fact, I wish to add to what Tim has said mm. in that perspective, mm. that uh, actually uh, there is an, a multi-agency team on the ground that okay. has been coordinating the activities, mm. uh, headed by the county commissioner mm. of West Pocot County. And um, really, the initial emphasis and focus was really to address the immediate short-term uh, challenges. Mm. Uh, but now, I think at this point in time, much as there is already uh, information to the effect that uh, you know, there is going to be continued downpour, mm. and, and, and uh, uh, the landslides are, are still uh, glaring uh, and likely to happen any moment, mm. uh, I would wish to add that uh, that agency at the moment, uh, the information that I've had lately, is that uh, they have had a little bit of reprieve and uh, they will start focusing tomorrow mm. on specific uh, systems to get that data mm. analyzed and, and, and get the information uh, that we will gladly be able to share with you among other stakeholders. Mm. Uh, so the data analysis begins tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's a little more critical for data, uh, clear data uh, collection, mm. yes. Ruth, do you think you get sufficient weather information? Yeah, but not so much because to me, I believe the weatherman is just doing the right thing at his or from where he's sitting. Mm. But to other departments, they are just hearing like any other ordinary person. Mm. Because like the Ministry of Agriculture in my county, they have all the data. They mm. understand what is supposed to be done. Mm. But to me, I think there is something missing in this country. Mm. We have the national government and the county government. Mm. We don't know where the boundaries are. Because for now, everybody is quiet. Mm. The other day, the strategic forces have people going around, being led by Dr. Noe Kesa. Mm. But for now, it's so quiet. It's not saying anything about this weather. Mm. And they're really expecting the farmers to give them maize. Mm. So if they could be taking the right, um, the right, the right track, they could be even in a position to advise the farmers. Mm. But how do you expect a farmer to give you maize and, you're, and yet you're not coming on board and say something at this moment when the farmers are really going through the difficult moments? Mm. So I think there must be something wrong in this country. So from where I'm sitting, it is possible. I think the Ministry of Agriculture should be devolved fully. Mm. He issued some national government, county government, it should stop. So that mm. if, it is, if it could be the county government, we could be facing the county government from where we are sitting mm. and even try to articulate issues. You think but the county now, government would work better for you than if agriculture was in the national I government? I wish the county government could take over agriculture fully. Mm. Because for now, the national government is just talking about the strategic food reserve, mm. and yet we are not seeing them now when the farmers are so desperate. Mm. So if this thing could be devolved fully, we could be in a position to sit down with the county government, negotiate, and get the way forward. But for now, we cannot reach even the national government. Mm. So our worry now is that when we start crying as farmers, when mm. we start complaining that we are not going to harvest this maize, the next day, of maize, will, the market will be flooded. Flood. And yes. we shall not even be in a position to sell mm. the, the little maize we have. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. OK, so um, uh, Jaggi, You've heard what they've said about the, 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 the gaps yeah. in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the government, between government, national government and county government. Yeah. Do you think it's possible to bridge the two so, so they work better for the farmer? Yes, and uh, maybe just to correct Ruth, eh? mm -hmm. I think the majority of the functions in agriculture are now with the county governments. Eh? Mm. So I think the key question is uh, how do we make county governments more re responsive, more effective I I to fully discharge the mandate that has been given to county government. Mm. That is where the key gap is. Mm. So we need to uh, have this kind of discussion where we say, is the mm. issue budgeting? Mm. Is the issue uh, skills? Mm. Is it infrastructure? And then what can be done to strengthen county governments to fully you know, discharge those functions? Mm. Um, currently, there's been a lot of effort uh, within the agriculture sector to, to improve the harmony between the national and county government. Mm. Uh, that now we already have the, the joint agriculture Sect, joint agriculture sector coordination and cooperation mechanism, mm. which is basically a forum where 
the national governments and county governments come together to address the key issues that are in the sector. Mm -hmm. But uh, clearly I'm hearing what Ruth is saying, that yes. uh, more needs to be done and more, more urgently. We need, not, we, we need not to wait uh, you know, f f for us to say that we are still trying to solve the teething problems yes. uh, that came with the evolution. We, mm. we need to have now moved beyond that to, to the real things, uh, to see how we can make impact uh, on farmers' uh, livelihoods uh, so that they can continue producing uh, enough food for this country. Mm. Uh, but yes, so th that uh, beyond that, uh, I think the other key things that we need to also to address, um, we have a climate change action plan for the yes, country. So yes. Uh, so even as you're dealing with the issues of production, I think the other key things that we also need to address is the issues of mitigation and adaptation mm. uh, for farmers. Mm. So my, my, my worry is that when I see the weatherman saying, for example, that uh, uh, the rains are going to persist, I think last uh, two, two days ago we had a uh, Kenjan saying that uh, the seven folks are, are full and, and Masinga Dam, and Masinga Dam is yes. full. Mm. Then the first thing you realize, mm. Mm. What, up, what, up, what about the farmers in Garissa? Yes. The, what about the farmers in Tana River? Because mm. what will happen? River is, Tana is also flooding. Exactly. Mm. Because now immediately, the, the, I mean, we've seen what has happened uh, from the from from the clip mm. in Nyando. Mm. Uh, once the river burst, you know, it, it's not just the crop; it's both the irrigation infrastructure. Yes. If you have machinery there, it also gets destroyed. Mm. And who, who is going to compensate that? Okay. Know, how, how do we help those farmers yes. deal with that shock? Mm -hmm. So we need to start thinking of also the, how we can uh, try to reduce the effects. Because mm. as we, the more we are going and uh, if you look at the, the trend the world is going, we have, yes, we now have the realization that we need to, to do more in terms of climate action. Yes. But we need to build our resilience and mm. resilience of our farmers to be able to cope with the effects of the adverse weather.